37. I want to share probably what is a very familiar scripture to most of you who have been around church very long. I'm sure that you even have heard messages on this scripture before. But I feel like that in this day in which we live, uh, there's an urgency in the air, amen, to do what God wants us to do. Uh, I talked with Sister Vicki Henderson for a few minutes last night. And, uh, we are praying about joining forces with her uh, in the fall of the year for us, some services in Tennessee. And uh, I want to be much in prayer about that. Uh, but she expressed the same thing that I was already feeling, that there's an urgency uh, in the air for uh, if we're going to reach anybody for the Lord, we better be getting about our Father's business. Right. Amen. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left. I, I sincerely believe that the Lord is soon coming back. So, uh, with that in mind, I want to share with you a few thoughts that the Lord has placed upon our heart this morning. Ezekiel chapter 37, begin reading at verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Our Father, as we come to you this morning, I thank you for the privilege that we have uh, to come into your house once again, and to worship you and to praise you. Father, I ask you this morning that you would have your way in every heart and in every life. Uh, you know the needs that are present in this service this morning. But Father, most of all, I pray God that you would use me to preach the Word of God today. You know, Father, my heart. I hide myself behind the cross this morning. And I ask you to use the Holy Spirit to preach through me that it would be pleasing in your sight. And we'll not fail to slip off somewhere and give you the honor and the glory and the praise for it all, for it's in Jesus' lovely name that we ask it. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> it's a joy to be in God's house today. Amen. Amen. I would rather be here than anywhere I can think of. And if you're here this morning, if you're here for the first time, you're an honored guest in our midst, and we appreciate it you being here. How many of you know the Bible said uh, that we could speak to a mountain and make it be removed and be cast into the sea right. if we had faith as a grain of mustard seed? Yeah. And the Bible teaches us all through Scripture, especially in the New Testament, that we can have whatsoever we say. But I want us to notice a few things about this Scripture this morning. Uh, and I realize that this is 
Ezekiel and in the time uh, that Israel was drifted away from God, they were in captivity and they were in a hopeless situation uh, that Ezekiel saw this vision. But I want you to notice some things about Ezekiel and about this vision this morning that I think can be compared to today and the church that we serve God in today. Amen. I believe with all my heart that the number one thing that I have found in this scripture is found in verse 1 and in the first sentence where Ezekiel said, The hand of the Lord is upon me. Uh, this means that he was taught, he was led, he was guided, he was protected, he was empowered. It's a wonderful thing, folks, to know that the hand of God is upon your life. Yes. It's a wonderful yes. thing to understand that you have the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God in a day like we live in today. Yes. Amen? Yes. I know there are a lot of people uh, that want to do their choosing and want to do what they want to do. But it's a wonderful thing to be led by the Spirit of God. Because I'll tell you, if you are, you're going to avoid a lot of pitfalls and traps of the enemy along the way. How many of you know that? Right. Yeah. Now, another thing that Ezekiel said here was that he was carried. He said he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Now, I know that there are people even in our community that question being slain in the spirit. But, folks, I've been in the spirit. Amen. And some of you have been in the spirit. And you know what it is to experience uh, uh, something that Ezekiel was talking about here. And to be carried out in the Spirit of God. And to see things that are unexplainable in this world. How many of you have ever been carried away by the Spirit of God and God has revealed to you or opened to you a vision that you not normally wouldn't have and you can't even explain it right now? Yes. Ezekiel was there. He uh, was carried to a valley, the Bible said, full of dry bones. Ezekiel said the Spirit carried me away and He set me down in a valley full of bones. One of the biggest problems we have as, a Christian, as Christians today is that we have forgotten about the cross. We want everything that happens to be for our comfort and our enjoyment. How many of you know that? I have suddenly begun to understand through the leadership of the Holy Spirit in the last two or three weeks that there are a lot of people, they want to be healed. They want to be financially prosperous. They want to be known. They want to be popular. But they don't want to do that for the glory of God. They want to heap that upon themselves. Yeah. Why do people come forward for healing? I have seen people get into a prayer line and they say, oh, this arthritis or, or this whatever it is, cancer or whatever, you know, it's really taking a toll on my life and I need to get back to work and I need to do this and I need to do that. Have we gone so far that we desire the gifts and the miracles of God not for the glory of God but for our own convenience? I think we have in a lot of senses and in a lot of ways. See, I've got news for us this morning. Everything in life's not about us. There are some other people around here too. Amen. Sometimes God allows us to get into situations and they're uncomfortable places. Uh, and what God wants us to do, instead of having a pity party when we get there, is Use what God has given us to change the atmosphere while we're there. Amen. 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 That's what Ezekiel did in the Valley of Dry Bones. Because God asked him a question. He said, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, basically he said in our language, Lord, I don't know. Only you know the answer to that. But I looked up the word dry, and it's a primitive root word in the Hebrew, and it says to be ashamed, confused, or disappointed, or to dry up as water, or to be confounded, or utterly wither away. And that kind of changes for me the meaning of this entire scripture. Because Ezekiel is having an experience, 
and he's in the spirit of the Lord. And God has carried him away because God's hand on him and sets him down in a valley of dry bones. And he looks around him, and I'm sure that he was a little bit perplexed and a little bit confused. I would have been, and you probably would have been too. But the first question out of God's mouth was, Ezekiel, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Lord, only you know. But notice the next thing God says to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, prophesy. You prophesy to these bones. Yeah. Whoa. God requires us sometimes to walk into a dry place, to walk into a rough place, to walk into a, to a hard valley and change the atmosphere in that valley yeah. rather than just sit down on the bank and, and begin to have a pity party because we're there and run to God and say, Lord, I want out of here. I want healed. I want delivered. Get me out of this. God said, if you'll just stay there, I'll make a miracle out of this through you. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Think about that for a minute. See, these bones had one thing that was a common denominator. They weren't Baptist bones, they weren't Methodist bones, they weren't charismatic bones, they weren't rich bones or poor bones. They weren't fat bones or skinny, they were just bones. Amen? And they were dry bones. They had two things in common, they were bones and they were dry bones. Now that means that somewhere in the past, the vessel that contained those bones had ceased to exist. And in a course of time, the flesh and everything that was attached, muscle and, and skin and everything that was attached to those bones had since dissipated and disappeared. And they were just bones. And they were very dry bones. But you know what? Some of us get like that. I mean... How many of you know that there are Christians that are very dry? And it's time for us just to face the truth. If you're dry, you're dry. Amen. If God's not blessing you, He's just not blessing you. If you're not feeling the Spirit of the Lord, you're just not feeling the Spirit of the Lord. There's no sense in beating around the bush and trying to make an excuse. Doesn't matter what denomination you are. Doesn't matter who you profess to be. Dry is dry. Amen. Doesn't matter. So God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And out of this question, I hear God saying, never say never. It may look hopeless to you. It may look like that it's an impossibility to you. But I'm here to tell you this morning, as long as there's a God in heaven, there's a hope. Amen. 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 It doesn't matter what the situation appears to be. It doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as God is still on His throne, we have a hope if we're trusting and putting our faith in Him. Amen. So, God tells Ezekiel, said, Hear the word of the Lord. How many of you know the Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word Amen. of the Lord. All too often, we look at the situation that we find ourselves in, and we are perplexed because it appears to be a valley of dry bones. I mean, life has long since gone from those bones. There's no hope. There's no way. Uh, what are you going to do with a bunch of bones? And we look around us in our life, and our life appears in the same situation as those bones. But God teaches us to have faith. Amen. And believe that He's able to do whatever He said He could do. And I'm here to tell you this morning, and we sing this song around here a lot, if He's done it once, He'll do it again. Amen? Amen. If God's touched one time, He'll do it again. If God has healed one time, He'll do it again. If God has moved in the, uh, on behalf of an individual one time, He'll do it again. God is still the same Amen. yesterday, today, and ever. See, God... Unbeknownst, seem like to a lot of us, has a plan for total restitution. God has a plan for restoration. God wants you to know. God wants me to know. He has a plan to resurrect and restore 
everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Amen. He wants to do that for you. He desires to do that for you. He loves you that much. So verse 10 tells us what God's ultimate goal and plan for these bones was. And if you look at verse 10, it's obvious God had a plan for these dry bones in this valley. He didn't just carry Ezekiel away in the spirit for no reason. God had a purpose for these bones. Well, listen to what he said in verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. You see, God's plan was to create an army out of those dry bones. And I am convinced today that God's plan for this final hour in the church is to bring His church, not this church, but His church, together and create a mighty army marching in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God and going into the harvest fields and reaping the final harvest. I'm absolutely convinced God is not going to let us out of here until we reap that final harvest. Amen. Well, God has a problem. There's a lot of churches that are just dry bones. Amen. So God said to Ezekiel, you prophesy to these bones. God is telling me as a minister and a called into uh, to do the work of the Lord. He says, you just continue to prophesy. Let me worry about bringing the bones together. Amen. You just continue yes. to work, continue to yes. preach, continue to deliver the word of God. Yes. Continue to yes. prophesy. Amen. 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 Even the dead stop. We're not going to slow down. Amen. We may get frustrated. We may get disgusted. But I'm here to tell you there's enough of a manifestation of the Holy Ghost of God in this church and in me and in you till we can come into a valley of dry bones and we can present the gospel and it has the power to bring people together. So God has a plan to build an army not just to resurrect them not just to restore them, but to empower them. And I believe that's what he wants. He wants to equip this army in this last days for a harvest that will match, was matched by no other this world has ever seen. Amen. I believe God's working in that direction. But I want you to notice something about this. This plan required a unifying, a uniting, a putting back together. There's been a lot of division in the body of Christ over the last 20 or 30 years. And I think it's time that God brought us back together. I think we begin. Uh, the Bible said in the book of Psalms, Behold how good it is for men and brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah. I believe the first requirement in the body of Christ today before we can reap the harvest is we're going to have to unite as one body. Amen? Amen. Yes. The first requirement in this valley of dry bones was that bones become to, began to become to bone. Amen? And they began to come back together. God has always been a God of unity. God has always been a God that worked together in people of all races and creeds you know, it doesn't matter if we can agree on the basic fundamentals of the gospel of Christ, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. We argue about a lot of things that are unnecessary. See, there was no breath in these bones, even after the skin had come upon them, even after the sinew had come upon them, even after they were rejoined together, there was no breath in them. And breath represents spirit or life uh, or power breathed into them until first the bones begin to come together and then all that not happened, but then they had a problem. They were still dead bodies. Even after God put the flesh and the skin on them, they were still bo dead bodies until God breathed 
the breath of life into them. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your name is, where you come from, who your mom and daddy was. If you don't have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied to your life, right. amen, you're lost as a goose. Huh? Yes. That's as plain as I can put it. I don't care where you go to church, what denomination you are in, it doesn't make any difference. Until the Holy Spirit of God breathes the breath of God into you, you might walk around every day. You might enjoy everything that this old world has to offer. But until God breathes on you, until the Lord Jesus Christ washes you in the red blood and makes you as white as snow, you are not born in John 13 and 35, the Bible said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. 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 We sang that song, There's Been a Change. He made a change. How many of you know that until you get born again, you're sort of out for yourself? And you want everybody to agree with you and comply with you. That's why my friend sent that thing. If you, Lord, if you can't make me skinny, make it all my friends fat. <laughs> we want to be identified with the same type and kind of group. But folks, I'm here to tell you, when the Lord Jesus Christ washes you, He makes a change in you. Amen? You know, brother, you might be skinny, but you no longer need all your friends to be skinny. You might be fat, but you don't need all your friends to be fat. But you do need them all to be born again. Amen. 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 That's yes. what it's all about. Praise the Lord. Now, that's my ex-friend. He's not a friend. <laughs> now, I love him to death. He's, we've been friends for a long time. See, Jesus said to us, John 17 and 23, 22, The glory which thou gavest me, and he was praying to his Father, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. The greatest victory, you hear me, church, the greatest victory Satan ever gained in the body of Christ was bringing division into the church and into the body of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. The greatest victory the devil ever won was getting us fussing and feuding and fighting back and forth with each other on our petty beliefs. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. To get us fussing over the non-essentials, to get us and our attention focused on people, our social status, or how we were baptized, what difference does it make? Amen? Amen. Or whether we speak in tongues or not. Now here's one that's really touching nowadays. Amen? But I want to tell you something, church. I feel a stirring in my spirit. I, I feel an urgency in my spirit this morning. That, that we need to put our little petty differences aside and begin to unite with our, our fellow Christians in the body of Christ and begin to work toward winning the loss because yeah. this thing's about over with. Amen. Yeah. And if you can pray for us. If you've got loved ones in your family and friends that you know that, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you upon the authority of God's Word that very soon there's coming a separation. Amen? And I'm talking about brothers and sisters and mothers and dads and aunts and uncles and friends and family will be separated for eternity because some of them didn't know the Lord and some did. What a terrible, terrible thought. That should encourage us to put away our differences and begin to serve the Lord together in unity. See, there's an anointing that God wants to bring on the church. And on you and I as individuals. And on this town. That's right. Amen. And on the many churches that are in this town. God wants that. But I want you to know this morning it will not come until we're ready to see each other through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. And repeat that, it's so important. What God wants to do with an anointing on the body of Christ will never come 
until we're ready to see each other through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Word of God is what's important, not what I think or what you think. The Word of God destroys division. Did you know that? The Word of God destroys contention in the body of Christ. So I don't care whether you speak in tongues or not. I don't care whether you shout or not. I don't care whether you dance or not. I don't care whether you're baptized in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. As long as your first baptism before any of that was in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And your faith is in Him. Oh, I trust that your faith is not in some ceremony or some ritual or some routine. The Bible teaches us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. Peter said in the book of Acts that there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's only begotten. See, it's not about me. It's not about you. And it's not about us. It's about Him. Amen. 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 It's about Him. See, you need to know that. If you come by the way of Calvary through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're my brother and you're my sister. I don't care what else counts. It, 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 there's nothing else that matters. If you have received that washing, that regeneration by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a brother and a sister in the Lord. And you're welcome, amen, uh, in our midst. And you're welcome to work with us in lock arms, arm in arm. See, I'm Pentecostal. I'm a Holy Ghost, tongue talking. I believe in it. I've experienced it. I know all about it. I'm a Bible thumper, pew jumper, amen. I'll run I don't care. But that's not what's going to get me to heaven. It's the blood. It probably means, you know, I, I think about this a lot. You don't have to do any of that to be saved. That's right. That's but I'm here to tell you this morning that I'm probably having a whole lot more fun than most people that ain't good. See, it's time. I, I firmly, I feel the stirring in my spirit. It's time to remove our focus from the things that divide us. Place, place it on the things that unite us. Amen. Amen. The issue is working together to build the kingdom and reap the final harvest. That's what it's all about. See, the devil's got us focused on one tree, and because we're focused on that one tree, we can't see the forest. How many of you ever heard that? You can't see the forest for the trees. Amen. The devil's good enough, but he's got us focused on one tree. Whatever that tree is. When we get back to the basics and come together around the cross in the blood of Jesus Christ, God will send a mighty revival to them dry bones. Amen. Amen. I believe God's ready to resurrect His church, to make it what He intended it to be, to make it what He began to be in the book of Acts. I believe we've gone way off of that, but God's ready to bring it back. He's waiting on us. Amen. He's waiting on me, and He's waiting on you. It's time to review our true desires. Bert, you need to come if you will. We need to decide why we want to be healed, why we want to be delivered, why we want to be blessed. Is it so that we can glorify God and use the balance of our days and our health and our money and all that God gives us for His glory? Or is it because we want to be comfortable? Is it because we want... I mean, you take somebody with cancer and 
They don't want to be healed. They go to a doctor to be healed. But why do they want to be healed? Even a lost man or woman wants to get rid of the cancer. But their motives are different than ours should be. You see, they want to get rid of it because they don't want to die. They want to get rid of it because they want to go on enjoying their life and their family and their possessions and their job and whatever they do. But if there was ever a people who need a desire to be healed and delivered and financially blessed just so we can take all of that and apply it to our work in the kingdom of God, that's us. You see the difference between God's people and the work? Before I'm here to tell you that there's a church, there's churches full of people that are wanting to be healed, touched, and delivered for the very same reasons that the world wants it. They, they're not interested in the kingdom of God. They just want to feel better. They want to be better. They want to be able to go to the lake. They want to be able to go fishing. They want to be able to do this. No, folks. God provided all those signs and wonders and miracles to the body of Christ so that we would use them to glorify Him. So Ezekiel stood in a valley full of dry bones. God asked him a question. He said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel says, I don't know, Lord, you know. God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. That's what I'm doing to you this morning. I'm telling you, I am prophesying to you today that if the body of Christ will come together in unity and begin to work together in unity, God's people will begin to desire what God has for them for the correct reasons, we can see miracles. Amen. But if we, even in the body of Christ, are still coming to be prayed for, to get healing and deliverance, just because we want to be more comfortable or we want to enjoy life more, then we're not going to accomplish anything for the Lord. And, and I've got news for you. This is what God told me. That's the reason a lot of people don't ever get healed. They're not there for the right motive. They're not there for the right reason. They want to heap the blessings of God upon themselves and keep them themselves. But the Word of God teaches sharing teaches giving, teaches fishing. If you read the bulletin this morning, you know that. Teaches us reaching out. There's only one purpose that God has us here. And that's to reach a lost and a dying world for Him. Amen. If it wasn't for that, we'd already be home for Him. Right. And I'd love to be there today, but I've got a reason to be here and you have to. If you didn't have a reason, if God didn't have a purpose and a plan for your life, you wouldn't be here. 